in this episode of Dil Se, I'm going to have a conversation which, with one of perhaps the tallest leaders of the country, a man of great intellect, a man who, even if you don't like him, you'll have to respect him. He's a man of few words, very sharp, very measured, and a man who has been in politics since 1972, held many portfolios. He entered the Congress in 72. In 84, he became a minister, deputy minister of commerce. Then he became a minister in a subsequent government, in Narsim Rao's government. He was, held the Ministry of Commerce twice. In, uh, and, and of course, then he went on to become the finance minister, gave a dream budget to this country in 1997, then uh, became the finance minister in the UPA, became home minister. So a, a, a lifespan in politics and an understanding of economics that none can match. And that man is Mr. Chidambaram. Thank you very much for being here. Good evening. But we're going to talk not so much about um, the various portfolios you held, but on the PMLA. And the reason is that it's much in the news. It's being misused on a daily basis by this government. And they say that you brought in the law. I have the book with me. It says Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. It is Act 15 of 2003. This is Mr. Vajpayee's government. This law was passed in Mr. Vajpayee's government for whatever reason, they did not notify it. It received the assent of the president on 17-1-2003, long before UPA came into office. In the meanwhile, pressure was exerted by the FATF, Financial Action Task Force, of which we are a member. See, so why are you not, not notifying the act? So when we came into office in 2004, the pressure has mounted so much, and there were even questions, why is this act not being notified? Therefore, we had no option but to notify the act. But I did make a couple of amendments and then notified the act. So this is not my baby or the UPA's baby. This was inherited. And little did we know at that time that this will be grossly misused. There is a way of reading an act. There is a way of applying an act. Uh, a law has to be read reasonably, fairly, and applied reasonably and proportionally. This law has been completely misused, which is why I have been saying, if the Congress comes back to power, we will repeal this law and reenact a better law. So, but that's a question of when and if. Well, I don't know, but this is on top of the agenda. Mm. This law has vested arbitrary, untrammeled power upon one investigating agency, which is now more powerful than all the investigating agencies put together. So, but let me ask you, I think people don't know those who are watching this program will not know. What is this FATF? See, it's a Financial Action Task Force, a voluntary body of practically all the major economies of the world. And uh, unless you become a member of the FATF and address the issue of money laundering, they will not exchange information with you. They will other countries which will place large restrictions upon capital flows, inflows, outflows, especially sharing of information. We are now part of the global economy and we need information. We need to give information, take information. We are nowhere near the scale of money laundering that happens in, say, Russia or even the United States. Uh, those are on gargantuan proportions. But 
Indians abroad, NRIs, Indians with businesses abroad, have transactions. And unless we fall in line with the internationally accepted norms of money laundering and the law to curb money laundering, we will be excluded from the information exchange. Well, you know, since we are friends for a long time, I can call you PC. I just want to know from you, the genesis of this law is related to drug money yes. being laundered and uh, terrorist money being laundered or, or, or uh, uh, mostly drug money. Mostly drug money and terrorist. Yes. And human trafficking. And human trafficking. So these were the these are the major, uh, uh, say, businesses in which money is. So offered. if that's the genesis of the law, this schedule of the PMLA makes scheduled offences means offences which they consider scheduled offences, which involves perhaps every law in this country, right, including provisions of the code of, of the Indian Penal Code, yes. like 400, 420, which is cheating, uh, uh, forgery of a document. So the result is that in any, any civil action or criminal action on cheating, you can arrest a man and the bail provisions are such that he will not be released on bail. See, this schedule has made this act worse. But who made the schedule? Yeah. All right. The schedule was inserted initially in the original act. It was a very short schedule. It had part A and part B. And um, the lesser, so-called lesser offenses were in part B. But this schedule has been amended twice or more. Major amendments were made in 2013 and in 2018. 2013, this act um, came into force on 15 to 2013. Again, the schedule was amended um, in 2018. The amendments to the schedule have made the matters worse. And um, this is because uh, uh, the pressure from the uh, Directorate of Enforcement that unless these offenses are added, it's not possible for them to file a comprehensive complaint or a charge. But if you if you have an offense like 420 that is cheating, yes, right, and under ordinary law you can get bail. The moment you add that in the schedule, an ordinary action on cheating, a criminal action on cheating, also becomes a scheduled offense. Correct. And people can't get bail. So, so I mean, why, why should this have happened at all? This was wrong. There's no question about it. This was wrong. And uh, this schedule should have been kept short and tight. The sh schedule should not have been extended. But uh, perhaps there was pressure from the FIT, FATF to add uh, more more offenses to the schedule. I mean, I can't uh, remember now. This happened, um, this exercise happened during the period I was away from the finance ministry. But I will now admit that this enlargement of the schedule was clearly wrong. Because you were a finance minister from 2008 to 2012. Yes. Right. And then you became a home minister. So why, when this schedule was amended in 2013? No, no. 2008 to 2012, I was not finance oh, yeah, minister. Yeah, exactly. You were finance minister from 2004 to 2008. 2004 to 2008. So when you were finance minister in 2013, this amendment took place. Yes, but this is an amendment. The, 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 the law is notified as Act... Um, um, but this was expanded. Uh, the schedule two, was expanded at that Act point. Act 2 of 2013. Uh, but the schedule had been drawn up and I think uh, the bill was introduced or passed uh, earlier. I know that. But what I'm trying to say is that this expansion of the schedule took place during our time. Oh, during UPS time. Yes, no that's what I'm saying. Yes. But who was the finance minister who introduced the bill? 
um, I, I can't that remember that now. Doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We have to take collective responsibility yeah, exactly. for the schedule, which is why I say I have no hesitation in admitting the enlargement of the schedule was wrong. Yeah. But then, of course, the problem is then when this act was challenged and when the Supreme Court rendered that decision, which I think we've been trying very hard to question it and say that, look, it should be referred to a larger bench. Uh, and in the context, what's it happening in this country by the misuse of this act? Uh, we're not seeing uh, the court actually looking at this whole law and the impact of it on the polity of the country. See, in my respectful view, respect to the three judge bench which decided the challenge to the PMLA, that judgment is contrary to well-settled principles of law. And the review petition that has been filed is a comprehensive review petition which questions major conclusions. Unfortunately, the review petition has not been posted for hearing. Remember, your viewers should know that the review petition was admitted by a three-judge bench of which Chief Justice Ramana was the That's lead correct. judge. He clearly said in his order, on two issues at least, this judgment deserves to be reviewed. Correct. Uh, he didn't specify the two issues, but we all know what the two issues are. Subsequently, benches have questioned one or other of conclusion. And then when fresh writ petitions were filed, a three-judge bench heard arguments led by you for almost um, two or three days. And they were pretty satisfied that the matter must be referred to a larger bench for review. So I don't think uh, the fact that the Supreme Court has pronounced this act by and large valid should inhibit us from discussing the weaknesses of the judgment. This must be reviewed. And the sooner it's reviewed, the better. The danger of not reviewing is the following. We're at the cusp of the 2024 Lok Sabha election. If this law is not reviewed, the manner in which this law is being used against every opposition leader in this country will in fact turn the tables as far well, as... I have no doubt about it. They have arrested ministers. Yes. They have arrested a chief minister. Correct. It's never happened in the country it's before. It's never happened. Yes. And this was uh, not the uh, concept of federalism that um, uh, was uh, uh, thought of by the founders. Now imagine if the state government starts arresting union ministers. <laughs> this is a, a mischievous thought. Well, you can't, the state governments can't use that law, unfortunately. Not under this law. Yeah. Every minister belongs to a state. He will have property there, he will have family there. Um, uh, you can always uh, level a charge against a sitting union minister and the state police can arrest him and throw him in jail. This is completely destructive. You see, the right thing to do is, for example, when, a, when there's a charge against a judge, the law today is, you know better, that you will have to bring the material to the notice of the Chief Justice. If the Chief Justice permits a loan, you can do an investigation. And before anything happens to him, he will be persuaded to tender his resignation. So this is uh, the ED allegedly acting independently, is um, raiding ministers, raiding chief ministers, questioning chief ministers. Um, if the tables are turned and if the state government does uh, starts doing that uh, under the regular criminal law and other state laws against uh, union ministers, this country's uh, constitution will break down. Governance will break down. I think it's already broken down, if you ask me. <laughs> well, it's already broken down. Um, and uh, What is left if the ED goes only to the opposition states, yes. targets opposition leaders, targets sitting chief ministers, right, threatens to arrest them, especially when we are in the cusp of a 2024 election, what's going to happen to our polity? Uh, and, I, then, I, I, and then the other thing is that when you fight an election, every 
every uh, every candidate when he fights an election has to disclose what criminal charges are yes. pending against him. Yes. And there are, if you go to the election commission's website, yes. you will find that many of the ministers of the center yes. and those who fought elections have several criminal charges, including chief ministers yes. in various states. Yes. So the uh, ED, uh, you know, doesn't go to them. It doesn't, doesn't, no, no, it doesn't. E as to the best of my knowledge, ED is not picked up an FIR in a scheduled offense against any union minister of the BJP. Government. But why doesn't the court take note of that fact? Well, uh, the court will say, um, uh, you um, approach the ED, give information, but the inf ED won't do anything. No, I'm saying something else. The court knows that only opposition leaders are being targeted. All that the court has to do is to have Suomoto start an action, yes. tell the ED to disclose to them all information regarding every minister or every candidate who has fought of all political parties who has got an offense, who's got an offense pending against him and ask the ED why? as to why they have not taken action oh, against yes. them and why are they taking action against the opposition leaders and the cattle out of the bag. We we'll know exactly Correct. how partisan this institution no, no, I is. I treated there are some uh, 300 and... Um, uh, 90 or so BJP MPs yes. and I think all over the country there have um, uh, several thousand MLAs yes. and especially the those of uh, defected from other parties to the BJP uh, which is why we call the BJP the great laundry machine, washing machine. Yes, yes. Uh, political laundry, it's not money over, laundering but political laundry. Yeah, moment you cross over all your offenses are uh, Sins are washed, all your sins are washed away. <laughs> all your sins are washed away. I can name chief ministers, yeah. I can name union ministers, I can name state ministers right. who have got charges against them, investigated by the BJP government, CBI or any other um, agency. And then uh, once, it, even ED has investigated them, but once you cross over, all files are... So then are what does it tell you about the ED? It, it shows that it's... It's a completely politically driven So agency. why should the court not intervene? It should. It should. I, I hope um, uh, some judges, uh, uh, some judge listens to your uh, interview on this conversation and uh, asks uh, fellow judges, why are we not intervening? Exactly. The other big issue that, that I think that needs to be discussed is that the three-judge bench of the Supreme Court, when dealing with the PMLA, said it's not a penal statute. It's not a penal statute, and these are not police officers. Well, that's a separate issue, but well, first, I, it's I not think a both penal are, Both are important. Both are important. Uh, if they are police officers, this becomes a penal statute. Right. <laughs> if it's a penal statute, the they officers will become police officers. Absolutely. And today, the only evidence which the ED has in many, many cases, is to coerce people to make statements, right. sign it under section 50, 50 or so, yes. and then say you've made a confession. Absolutely. Which will be completely ruled out in any criminal court under criminal law and Indian Evidence Act. But the ED's best evidence is coerce statements or confessions from the accused or the accuser's accomplice. No, the, 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 the significant thing about this law is under the Code of Criminal Procedure, when you call somebody, you call him either in his capacity as a yes. witness when an offense is being investigated yes. or as an accused. If you call him in the capacity of a witness, which you have to disclose, yes. then he has to make a statement. Yes. If you call him in his capacity as an accused, he then he has, to, he has to seek the protection of the constitution. He has a right to stay. Uh, in the PMLA, silent. in the PMLA, you do not, the, uh, the, 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 the ED doesn't have to inform the person concerned yes. who they call, whether they are calling him in the capacity of an accused yes. or in the capacity of a witness. This is the point which uh, uh, Mr. Arvind K. Jirival has raised. Yes. And I have seen summonses, any number of summonses, where information according to the schedule, and the schedule is blank. Yes. The schedule is blank. You are summoned to uh, bring information according to the schedule, and the schedule is completely blank. Absolutely. You don't know which is the predicate offense for which uh, you are being summoned. 
You don't know the uh, allegations which led to the ED to start taking action. You don't know what information you're supposed to bring, what documents you're supposed to bring. You go there with a blank mind and he can ask you any questions. And I have not seen a case where ED does not come out next day with a press statement, seven hours of grilling, That's eight right. hours of grilling. And uh, uh, this, is, this, this is contrary to all uh, fair procedure. Uh, not only that, I think it's a very serious issue for the reason I remember that, uh, that they made such scandalous allegations about properties located outside of India. Yes. Right. And since then, several years have passed. What's happened to those allegations? It just shows they wanted to, to defame individuals. They wanted to destroy their reputation. They had no evidence and they just wanted to incarcerate the person concerned. Now, this is this is something that's unacceptable in a country governed by the rule of law. That's why you see to undo the damage. The only way is to repeal this law and constitute a group of uh, jurists and experts to draft a proper prevention of money laundering law. Nobody is questioning that money laundering is a, is a serious offense in this interconnected world. Money laundering must be made punishable. But this is not, this is not targeting money laundering. This is targeting the alleged money launderer because he is a political person. That's correct. That's correct. Absolutely right. Now, let me, most people may not even know what's the difference between uh, crime, proceeds of crime and money laundering. Most yes. people would not know. But let me give a simple example. If you have some dirty clothes in your home and you put it in a machine, in a washing machine, they come out clean. So the difference between proceeds of crime is like dirty clothes. And money laundering is you launder in those clothes in such a way in the washing machine that they come out clean. So if you have dirty money with you, you launder it and to tell the public that this is clean money. So yes. if you take a bribe, yes. take a bribe, invest it in property and show as if this money you already had, you're laundering it. Right. That's what the meaning is. Correct. Now, the problem with this law is money laundering is the offense not proceeds of crime. Correct. If money laundering is the offense and you are, if you are convicted, you are punished a maximum of seven years and in other cases, 10 years, how is not a penal statute? No, no, it is obviously, it's a, penal obviously a penal statute. It's obviously a penal statute. Because the, 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 the foundation of the statute is a crime has oh, been Money committed. laundering. Crime has been committed. Yes. Under a predicate offense. Yes. The, 420 CBI. cheating is a predicate offense. Predicate offense. There's a crime has been committed. Now, a crime can be committed without money involved. Correct. You can murder somebody for um, uh, rivalry, but there's no money involved. Correct. You can also murder somebody and burgle his house. You can. The second one gives rise to a proceeds of crime. Correct. Murder with burglary gives rise to proceeds or of ransom. crime. Or ransom. Murder for ransom. ransom. Yes. Proceeds of crime. That proceeds of crime, if you want to charge somebody with money laundering, he must convert that crime tainted money and to make it appear to be clean untainted, money. Untainted. Untainted. Clean money. Correct. Untainted money. Correct. That he earned it as a lawyer or a doctor or a businessman. Correct. If this, that money is tainted, no question, but only when he converts the money or projects the money or um, makes it appear that to the world that this money is not tainted, he is guilty of money laundering. Now, unfortunately, the three judge bench lost this distinction and it uh, went on to say, which I think is plainly wrong, that every proceeds of crime becomes money, money laundering. laundering yes. uh, the distinction between a predicate offense and the special offense of money laundering it's has lost. been completely obliterated by the judgment, well, which is what we hope a uh, new bench will understand and appreciate. And But when? Um, but when? I don't know. Uh, you know better. <laughs> You, you, know, you uh, toil for two, three days uh, trying to convince a bench. But I think there were differences between the judges and one of the judges 
was retiring in um, a couple of weeks thereafter. And I think he, he just gave up the effort. Um, uh, I think um, uh, the presiding judge, Justice uh, Sanjay Kaul, ought to have persuaded his uh, um, brethren that we must refer the matter and let a larger bench decide the matter. Well, that matter is over now. The other aspect on this act is something that again worries me, is that Parliament amended certain provisions of this act by through the finance bill. Yes. Right? And, and therefore the amendments never went to the Rajya Sabha. Yes. So under ordinary laws, if you amend an act, it goes to the Rajya Sabha and the Rajya Sabha disagrees, then the act cannot be passed. Yes. But because it was included in the finance bill and some very drastic amendments were made through the finance bill and they called it therefore a money bill, Therefore, this never went, the amendments never went to the Rajya Sabha. Now, that's created a lot of problems. No, no, the key provisions which are being questioned today are all by money bills. That's right. The idea was that the Rajya Sabha should not scrutinize it. Right. Well, let's not mince words. The Rajya Sabha should not scrutinize it. Because if the Rajya Sabha had scrutinized it, at that time the BJP did not have a Majority. Uh, clear majority. Yes. It's possible that the bill would have been defeated or at least stalled. So they deliberately avoided the Rajya Sabha. And uh, this question, whether a money bill... Uh, whether money amendments bill, in ordinary law through the Finance Act can ever be a money bill. No, you can if you are, if you are, if you are amending a finance bill. That's different. You can amend it by another right. finance bill, which is a money bill. But when you amend such a law... No, if you're supposing that you are amending the Arbitration Act Correct. and you include it in the finance bill. No, no, this is clearly, this is clearly wrong. wrong. All the key provisions will be struck down. Yes. In fact, the three-judge bench, your viewers should know, your key three-judge bench which upheld this law clearly said in the opening paragraphs that we are not going to question the money bill. If the money bill argument is accepted, many of these provisions yes. will go. Yes. Which is why we are anxious that the money bill issue must be decided by the Supreme Court. But we are trying for the last uh, uh, four or five years, uh, uh, that case is not being heard. This is why people have been incarcerated, unfairly prosecuted yes. under the amendments, because of yes. the amendments, yes. which actually uh, uh, obliterates the difference between proceeds of crime and money Correct. laundering. Correct. That's the amendment. Yes. And the result is that people are being unfairly prosecuted and the court has sat for several years not to hear this matter. Now I believe that after the next constitution bench, you will have um, the issue of money bill being decided by See, constitution. this question bench. has actually been decided in an earlier case. Uh, what is a money bill and whether you can amend a non-financial bill by a money bill has already been decided. Yes. Uh, that law is, um, all, all the judges agreed on that law. Uh, the majority upheld uh, that law by uh, saying that one provision has been uh, deleted and one provision has been uh, read down. But Justice Chandrachud called it a fraud on the Constitution. That's correct. That's correct. Therefore, now that Justice Chandrachud is the Chief Justice, uh, he should take the process forward and decide this question whether the key amendments to the PMLA could be done by a money bill. That's right. And uh, going by uh, uh, declared law so far, I'm pretty confident that all these provisions will be struck down. In fact, uh, I have another concern. Assuming that the Supreme Court hears this matter, yes. say two weeks from now, and after a week or 10 days or whatever, it reserves orders. <laughs> By that time, I think sometimes in uh, March, there will be notifications issued yes. uh, for the Lok Sabha election, yes. which, hope, which is likely to commence in April sometime. By the time the judgment comes, the period would have been over. So what use is it to hear the matter when before the Lok Sabha elections, uh, you might even not get a judgment? 
No, no. Uh, judgment can't be held back for too long. Say, no, but I mean, uh, they've got so many constitution bench matters where judgments have not been delivered. So they no, will no. not hurry, hurry up any particular judgment. So the result will be, even if the matter may be, even if ultimately it's decided in our favor, the damage is already done. Oh, the damage is already done. Yes. Uh, whether the, the judgment uh, <laughs> comes to reverse some of the damage, damage has already been done. Yeah. Uh, the point is, at least future damage, damage will not take place in the future. Because the key provisions of this But in the meantime, they'll keep on arresting people under this they law. Will, this will. is the problem. I'm, I'm afraid that um, <laughs> the next targets are visible on, the, uh, vis visible on the radar. Yes, yes. And um, uh, who else is the target? I can't say. Um, uh, no, no, they are in the south also, they are targeting people. They are targeting ministers yes, now. Yes. Uh, they are not targeting a chief minister. Not yet. Not, not yet. yet a chief minister. <laughs> yeah. But they are coming pretty close to the family member of a chief minister. Yes, I know. In Kerala. Yes. And um, what about uh, what about West Bengal? West Bengal, another family member yes. of the chief minister. Yes, yes. They are pretty close to that. Yes. Uh, the idea is to put fear. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, sort of put fear and intimidate them, therefore they will stop their opposition to the BJP. <coughs> and um, if uh, somebody is um, uh, resolute in his opposition to the BJP, like uh, Heman Soren, they, they just arrest him. See, the last time we had a draconian law, it was the POTA, I remember. Yes. Right? But the POTA affected individuals. This particular law affects institutions, affects the federal structure of this Effect, country. Affects governments. Affects governments and affects the federal structure of this country. Because you're using the law to bring yes. down governments. Yes. Right? Pota didn't have that effect. Pota never had that effect. So perhaps it is the most draconian law in the history of this country. Undoubtedly, one of the most draconian laws. Pota was equally draconian because it may not have affected governments but it created huge amount of communal conflict that's true i was a home minister <coughs> i had gone to gujarat and looked at their pota cases i asked the chief minister <coughs> to give me a list of pota cases seven eight out of the, uh, ten persons arrested under pota were muslims yes that pota widen the divide between Muslims and uh, Hindus. They don't need POTA for that nowadays because you no, widen. Don't, uh, Therefore, I'm saying that POTA is not necessary. No, no. But One I'm of the reasons the... why I came back and yeah. said we have to repeal POTA. Yes. We no, have no, to we, repeal I support it. Uh, you yeah. in big, big yeah. time on that matter. We no, but to... I'm saying is the, 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 uh, the, 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 this particular law impacts the entire structure of yes. government in this country. And that's, that's the real worry. See, today a state government, a chief minister, cannot peacefully rule a state if this PMLA continues to hang over his or his minister's heads, which is what has happened today. No, it's just not chief ministers, PC. There's another issue there. What they do is they target the chief minister later, but they go to the bureaucrats under the yes. chief minister, right? And then they call the bureaucrat, supposing an IAS officer is posted in, in Karnataka or in Andhra or wherever. They'll call him Thank and you. they'll say, tell us your returns yes. for the last 10 years, your return, your wife's return, your children's return. Uh, we just want to know. So the bureaucrat then thinks, why should I get into all this? Yes. Right. And they, they then start threatening him in ways, you know, that we all know. The result is the, ad, the, the administration comes to a standstill. And so the, the government doesn't move forward. That impacts on the, uh, on, on, on the polity because people say, look, this government is doing nothing. And, uh, and the administration is, 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 in freeze, is frozen. This, uh, has this, happened, is a, this has happened in Chhattisgarh. Uh, Chhattisgarh. This has happened in Jharkhand. Yes. This is now happening in Tamil Nadu. That's correct. They are calling, uh, they, have, the, they have got a stay from the high court, I think, some kind of a stay. They are calling district collectors yeah. 
uh, they're calling um, revenue officials yeah. on alleged um, uh, ch um, uh, charges of sand mining. Correct. Now, the district collector may have left his district uh, six years ago, five years ago. He has moved on to other jobs. They're calling all those district collectors to say this sand mining took place when you were district collector. This was the DRO. This was the RDO the revenue officers, and they are uh, taking statements from him. They are summoning him. But on, on, on what basis? I mean, there's no money laundering involved. This is the predicate offense. Remember, Correct, if you investigate that, that something is, with sand mining, that's a predicate offense. But that distinction is wiped out. Now, the moment ED steps in, you see, my experience of cases I have looked at, ED <clears throat> investigates Largely the predicate offense. That's correct. ED is not investigating yes, money laundering. Yes. ED take ED records statements which the CBI does not record. Correct. And in many cases, ED is added to the proceeds of crime identified by the CBI. That's correct. CBI says the proceeds of crime are 10 lakhs. ED adds some 1 crore, 2 That's crore, correct. 10 which crore. Which it can't do. Which, which can't, can't do. Yes. Even under the present judgment of it the three-judge bench, it can't do. Right. But ED goes ahead and ED does that. And ED shares this information with the CBI. Right. And uh, I think uh, encourages the CBI to expand its uh, to charge sheet. Right. Uh, it, it, this is all. Um, so, uh, <laughs> the question is under what law can the ED say, you give me your returns for the last 10 years? No, no it, it can't. It can't. And in fact... The only offense under the Income Tax Act is one offense of making a, a statement under oath, etc. Correct, correct, correct. There's no other offense of income tax which is, which is part of the part schedule. Of the schedule. Correct. But, the ED, uh, but the ED is asking for which the income tax does not ask. Right. The ED has now become a, a super, than life, su yeah. super agency which has taken over all the powers of the SFIO, mm. the income tax, the customs uh, authorities, the excise authorities, the GST authorities, the CBI, uh, it's, it's taken over vast powers. It's the new god. It's the new god which controls yeah. everything in this country. No, now. no, which, which is, uh, which, which is uh, completely destructive of the rule of law that we have understood. Right. Uh, uh, I, I, I think, I hope that the Supreme Court will... Uh, wake up to the uh, gravity of the situation, the damage that is being caused all around, and quickly uh, hear the money bill question and quickly hear the review petition and set this law right to the extent possible until a new government comes and repeals this law. Quite frankly, the court should immediately set up a five bench, five judge bench and say, okay, till such time as we decide all matters, we'll let this be on hold. Yes. Sedition is put on hold. Yes. So there's no because harm, no harm let, in putting this on this hold. Let this not be used to, 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 for the for furtherance of the prospects of a political party in the election. And especially on the eve of elections, yes. uh, unless some restraint is applied by the Supreme Court, uh, I'm afraid uh, this government, the government of the day, uh, will... Uh, uh, will misuse this law more and more. Uh, the next two months, I think, I fear Not huge crucial. misuse of this law. Well, it's sad that we have reached this state, and I hope that the Supreme Court realizes the gravity of the situation. But thank you very much. I hope so. For being, hope so. For being here with me today and having this thank great you. conversation. Thank you.